Hi, everyone. Welcome and good evening to the To Be a Pope show. Um, I am your host, To Be a Pope. I am a certified communication um, specialist. Um, I have my master's in communication sciences and disorders. Um, I'm a certified speech language pathologist, and I also am a corporate and personal speech an image consultant. Um, so I work with professionals that um, in corporations that are looking for communication skills and image enhancement services. The To Be a Pope show is an image management talk show focused on educating and empowering our viewers to enhance their communication skills, image, and lifestyle. The show covers the science and art of how to really manage your skills, to self-package your skills, um, so you can create a successful, authentic personal brand and also maintain a professional image. The To Be a Pope show aims um, really to um, help our viewers um, through being a catalyst for personal and professional transformations. Um, when watching the To Be a Pope show, I really want my viewers to come to the show with the expectation of self-help and that I'm here to help you manage your brand and for you to um, do the work. The, I call it the brand work. You have to do the work, come to, for the expectation. And I have some thought, um, some questions for you as the viewer that I want you to think about um, on your own, especially while you're viewing. Um, what skills do you need to enhance? Is it, you know, what is your need? Is it communication? Do you have, do you find yourself having um, a lot of business meetings, a lot of um, professional uh, networking events that you're going to and, or, or interviews that you're go going out for and you find yourself nervous or you find yourself not really presenting the way that you want to present your skills or do you feel like your image, um, whether it be your wardrobe or your personal style needs an update um, or you are trying to exude um, a um, an executive or leadership presence in tr while you're climbing up the um, corporate ladder. And then your lifestyle. Everyone wants an affluent lifestyle, wants to be healthy, wants to have well, wants to be um, spiritually healthy as well. And so think about your lifestyle and the lifestyle choices that you're making. Are you connecting with um, people that are helping you grow where you're going? And that's something that you really want to think about how you're managing negativity, how you're managing your health, because that's very important to your personal brand overall. And um, and how do you manage your image as well as how is your image impacting your personal and professional success? Those are very important questions to ask yourself. Um, the To Be a Pope show is powered by the Image Management Center. Um, my team is working very, very hard on um, launching tobeapopeshow.com, where the Image Management Center will be an online portal, which will provide uh, webinars as well as networking events um, for our viewers. Um, however you connect, whether it be through social media, please connect with me and my guests. Um, I'm on social media at To Be A Pope Show, and that's consistent throughout my um, all of my social media accounts. So please connect with me. I love discussion about image management talk. That is uh, my hashtag. And you can also ask To Be A um, as another one of my hashtags as well. And if you want to be on the show as well as advertise on the show, you can also email me at um, media at to be a pope show .com. So that's just kind of some maintenance that I wanted to talk about before we um, before we get on tonight's show. Um, to, on tonight's show, I'm going to be talking about um, image and lifestyle with Lauren C. Ward. Uh, specifically entrepreneurship and the field of communications. Um, Lauren Ward is an entrepreneur, a published author, a motivational speaker, actress, a journalist, and a talk show host. She's similar, she, kind of, we have a lot in common, kind of similar to exactly, you know, um, 
kind of my brand as well. And that's why we've connected. We've also connected. She's my sorority sister, Alpha Chapter, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Just kind of put that out there. Um, so she is just a genuine, um, outgoing person that I love working with. And um, it's always good to connect with like-minded individuals. That, that And she definitely has a good heart as well. Um, so if you haven't already, please watch her trailer that's on um, tonight's show's Google Plus event page. Um, Lauren's entire bio and portfolio can be found on her website at lwoo.org, L-W-O-O dot org. Um, and also connect with her on her social media accounts as well. But before we go behind the brand of Lauren Ward, um, I want to kind of set the stage and talk about how to harvest your dreams. Um, because Lauren's testimony is really about overcoming obstacles and never giving up on your dream. So I actually wrote um, a kind of a, 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 I wrote this when it was on New Year's Eve, and I was kind of just thinking about how the entrepreneur's journey is similar to a farm and how there may be a drought because um, success is not instant when you are an entrepreneur and how you have to overcome from that drought um, and continue to build and harvest your dreams. So let me just read a little bit from that and then I'm, I'm also going to post it on um, tonight's Google Plus um, event page as well as tweet a bit, tweet a little bit of it and put it on our Facebook page as well. Planners do not just plant seeds and expect not to get a return. However, patience, hard work, and determination is required. They hustle tirelessly to prepare for harvest season by making an investment in buying equipment, education, and building a portfolio. In order to fertilize, plow, water, and nurture, stimulate their seeds, mind, budget, resume to grow. They build fences and spray hater propellant to protect and keep vultures, dream blockers, from destroying their intellectual property. They make written lists and business plans and create the opportunities, network, to sell their goods, services, and products. There may be a drought doors closed, but they have faith in God to keep them eating, moving forward until new doors open. It can take months and even years to finally see the fruits, wealth of their labor and be able to feast. Until one day they finally reap what they've sowed. It comes together, abundance. All because they weren't discouraged nor unwilling to sacrifice for a lifetime of happiness and prosperity. Dreams turned into reality at To Be A Pope Show. So this is what tonight's episode is about. It's about harvesting your dreams, overcoming obstacles. And, and Lauren has shown that she has overcome her obstacles. And she's going to talk a little bit about that. So Lauren, how are you this evening? I'm doing well, Tavia. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no problem. No problem. I'm so happy to have you on. And I think our viewers are definitely going to learn a lot from your story. And um, I actually, your bio talked about how after you graduated um, from Northwestern um, University in communications, you kind of hit a roadblock professionally. So can you tell our viewers a little bit about that roadblock and how you kind of bounced back? and um, you know, you've know you overcome your obstacles to become an entrepreneur. Yes, yes. Well, the roadblock that I hit after graduate school was that I was not able to find a job in my field. My, my major was broadcast journalism and I have a minor in acting. And then I had just received my master's in communications. And unfortunately I was told that I was overqualified or that I needed more experience. And so I was really at my breaking point. So last year, I stepped out on faith and I wrote my first book. I went back to my motivational speaking. I got back involved with acting and I did some work on Empire and Chicago Fire. I did a music video to help end the violence in Chicago. And I started doing teen writing workshops at Chicago Public Libraries. So 
I took that tragedy, tragedy and I made it into a victory because I wasn't going to be a victim any longer. And last year really was a hard time for me because I did have thoughts of suicide and I really did not know how to change my outcome. But I said, you know what? I'm a fighter. I'm a go-getter. I have that spirit and that self-motivation within myself that will not allow me to fail even when I'm at my, my lowest point. And I thank God for shining his light in me and reminding me that I'm his disciple and that I needed to deliver to his people and that I needed to encourage them, that I needed to save somebody else, else's life and I needed to remind myself why it was important to save mine and that I needed to walk in my purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, once I reminded myself that I was a child of God, once I spoke with my parents who are my foundation and I spoke to my family and close friends, they reminded me of who I've always been. And at the age of 13, when I got up on that stage in eighth grade and I gave that farewell address speech and the, the audience stood up and my classmates embraced me afterwards and they were intrigued by my words and, and uplifted, you know, I had to remember all of that. I had to remember the foundation that I built and I needed to remember who Lauren C. Ward was. And that's exactly what L. Wu stands for, Lauren Ward Overcoming Obstacles. And I, and I believe in that. I live that. And you know, faith is really key uh, in order to make it over the barriers that you face in your life because sometimes you won't always see where you're going, but as long as you have faith and you believe in yourself and you know that the results will come, you'll be, you'll be okay. Amen, that is excellent. That is an excellent testimony to continue to go on on and really tapping i think what you said is you really tapped into what your god-given talent is and what your what god has blessed you with and um that is the gift of public speaking and being able to motivate others um so you just wrote a book i just want to go back to your book so your book is entitled the six the stick the six step plan um rising to greatness to fulfill your destiny I got that right? Yes. <laughs> All right. So within the, the six steps, so can you kind of give the audience kind of um, some takeaway points from your book, The Six Step Plan, Rising to Greatness to Fulfill Your Destiny? Yes. Thank you so much for, yes, introducing my book. It is The Six Step Plan, Rising to Greatness to Fulfill Your Destiny. And it's God first, education, career, your own place, marriage and then kids and basically it's a guidebook for young people who are my age or younger i'm 26 and so it's a guidebook for people my age who who really need to understand why they should love themselves first and why they should create that financial stability because like for me i'm in a relationship i've been with my boyfriend for five years and people always say well when are you guys going to get married when are you going to have kids well we want to do all of those things but we just want to make sure that we kind of have half of our ducks in a row first we want to make sure that our relationship with god is right we want to make sure that we're educated so that when we do bring children into this world we can teach them about their history from the past and we can show them where they need to go we want to make sure that we're in our careers that we're that we're living our dreams I, you know i, I want to make sure that i get going to la and traveling i want to make sure that i'm committed to being a mom you know i mm -hmm. i want to make sure i still i'm living my dream in my career but i want to make sure that i'm giving my all to my children so i want to make sure i get my career set in stone first so that i can give my all to my children and then having your own place Wow, I think that solidifies being a strong man or a strong woman when you can really finally move out of your parents' house and have your own and have that independence. Mm -hmm. And then marriage, like I said, it'll come. It'll come with time, you know, marriage and kids. Like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually on step number three right now, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I'm on career and I'm trying to move to get in my own place because I, I am with my mom and dad. But you know what? People always say, well, you know, isn't it difficult, like, you know, living with your parents still? I say this. It, it is hard because, of course, you know, when you get to this age, and especially because I'm in a relationship, you want your own. Well, I will say enjoy that time with your parents. Mm -hmm. Enjoy that time saving your money. And just live in the midst of it because you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And I have finally accepted, accepted that I am where I'm supposed to be. And when God is ready to elevate me, he will. And he's already allowing me to walk in my purpose so that when I get there, I could take off and keep going. 
So that's a little bit what, what my book, like what it's about and, and why I wrote it, what inspired me to write it. And I say, if you do it in that order, you know, it, it definitely will prepare you for a lot of obstacles that you will face in your life. And that's why I said, number one is God first, because as long as you keep God first in your life, you will never, ever go down the wrong path or be stirred in a direction where you don't know who you are and you feel like you seek other people's approval because you will know who you are and you'll be proud about the strong man or woman that you have became. And being educated is for you. You know, for a long time, they tried to keep African Americans from being able to read or write or, or become educated. So the, the fact that we have the opportunity to get education is very important. And although it might cost, don't let that be a barrier. Get scholarships. You know, educate yourself by constantly reading. So I, I, education is very important. And career, like I said, I do want to be financially stable. I want to be financially free. I don't want to be living paycheck to paycheck and be worried about how I'm going to feed myself and my family. So I do think it's important to get that, that foundation under your belt. And then, like I said, having your own place is key. Having that independence and then marriage and kids will shortly come after. I think uh, you'll just get it when your time is right. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that you're 26. Do you feel like the, our age group, um, do you feel that, I feel like being entrepreneurs at, and trying to um, establish ourselves and also going after what we want, um, do you feel that our age group, do you, would, do you see that our age group is very kind of like hungry right now? Or, I mean, are like, how do you feel of this generation? You know, are there people like, who are you trying to inspire? Cause I feel like there are people that are trying to live out their dreams, but there are also people that also need some, assi some assistance and some need some help of, you know, kind of putting that jump start in of their career, or they're kind of like late bloomers in a way where they don't know. And so what is something that you, what you've seen within this generation of, you know, how can you inspire them and what do they need right now to work on their brand, work on their communication skills, work on their image and their lifestyle, because all of that is a self package and that's how you present yourself to the world. So my audience, you know, there's someone out there that wants to know, like, how do I do it? Like, you know, like, what do you see this generation? How do you how do you feel about this generation um, and your experiences with even your motivational speaking when you've gone out to inspire them? What do you see when you're out in the field about this generation that you can kind of like attest to and and help help somebody? First of all, to be a, our generation is dope. We don't take no for an answer. We don't let anybody set the rules for us. We set the rules for them. We truly live by the creed, I am a boss. So I'm so proud of our generation because we are not working the nine to fives and doing the 40 hours and then you'll retire. We're not doing that anymore. We're like, look. I'm well, you can't because <laughs> you can't. You kind of have to create your own opportunity. Right. And um, that's something that we talked about before. It's just you have to create your own, app your own opportunity. But there's someone out there that needs to know how to create the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of people that are hungry. There are a lot of people that want opportunity but they feel like they have they weren't able to get that opportunity so how do they create that opportunity for themselves and i say that's by tapping into what you're good at you know um what you what you would do if someone did not pay you to do it and then use that ability to you know go after your dreams so what do you what do you feel like you're when you're out in the field what else do you see when you're doing your motivational speaking and what are people asking? What are some of the questions they're asking you? You know, I do see people our age. Sometimes they are discouraged. And when I go to different shelters, schools and churches and I speak, and the first thing I always tell them is similar to what you just said, dig deep within yourself and find your niche, 
find what you are absolutely passionate about that you feel like you cannot eat live or breathe without it that every single day when you wake up in the morning and you lay down to sleep at night it's bothering you you can't even sleep at night because you constantly coming up with ideas in your heads and thoughts and so i always remind them like go after that what's stopping you don't let it be age because there's 10 year olds there's 25 year olds there's 50 year olds that are that are definitely living their dreams they're not allowing anybody to create a roadblock or put something in their path because they know they can overcome it. Harvest your dreams. Harvest your dreams. You heard right. it. <laughs> right. Yeah, heard, harvest your dreams. That is so true, Tabia. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I do the team writing workshops. That's why I speak at the schools and the churches and shelters to remind them, go out to these networking events. You know, go on. Go, sometimes when you get on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, just don't go on there to see who has on the hottest new outfit or who has the new hottest hair or whatever the case may be. Go on there and look for somebody in your field. Look for other motivational speakers. Look for other image consultants. Look for other entrepreneurs and, and message them. I, face, I Facebook message people that I don't even know because I just want to connect with them. And you have to change your mindset. It can't always be, well, I'm going on, on social media to keep up with the Joneses or keep up with somebody else. Why don't you go on social media sometimes and educate yourself Try doing what you're doing so that you can get your foot in the door with your field. Well, and that's I, a lot of, there. Um, I would say um, the kind of the social media outlets that I've as an entrepreneur, as um, a young entrepreneur, I feel like LinkedIn is a really good uh, social media site, as well as Pinterest um, is a very good social media site. And also Instagram, it can be um, a very good business tool if it's used correctly. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to build, um, especially if you're a visual oriented um, company, um, um, Instagram can be very good for you as well as Facebook. Um, so if it's, I think it's just how you, like you said, how you manage your online presence, okay? Because nowadays people can Google you, people can look your online presence, um, especially when you're going out for app, um, um, your application, going out for interviews, or going out for membership in different organizations. People are, are researching you. People wanna know what you're involved in, who are your friends. And I think that you also have to be mindful of, you need to be around people that are supporting you, okay? Because support is optional, but support can can lift you up to where you feel like you are, you know, who whoever that person in your field because you're supported and you have that love and you and so if people are constantly trying to bring you down and giving you a lot of negativity and and saying that you can't do it, you're going to start believing them, and that is kind of. I say that you know you ought you ought that the people in your life need to enhance what you're doing okay and you need to be able to be around a group of people that are moving and 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 grinding the same way you are especially when you're looking for a mate okay when we talk about dating especially your book you need to be around people that are going on the same path of you and i think sometimes when you're in high school those those friends yes you have some friends that you will grow up with and that will be on a kind of the same um trajectory as you but there's some people that you kind of have to let go and you have to admit it especially when you become you know um i say uh older around like 25 to 30 um you're making that shift into really you know, being about your business, there's some people that just aren't going to make it in your life because they're not on the same grind as you. They don't project the same image that you want to project at this stage in your life. And there's honestly nothing wrong with growing. When I say growing, where and you need to grow because if you are a believer in God, God wants you to grow. Okay, your especially your spiritual faith should definitely be growing with him, right? Um, and so you just need to continuously grow. I always say if you're going to do something that you love, um, that's where the money is. Because if you're doing something, it's not about the money. Because I'm doing this, and you know, 
I truly am passionate about this because I remember when I was a little girl, I used to have stuffed animals around and I used to just practice in the mirror speaking. So this is something that I've been doing since I was little. And I went back to it because that is something, it makes me feel good. You know what I'm saying? And when you do something that makes you feel good, other people can see that 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 is your calling right that that is your calling so do something that you love do whatever you know you want that is of good that's going to make i guess um make you an, a per, a personal brand because people are going to realize that this is who you are and they're going to want to come to you for that service okay especially if you have a company and you've um you've branded yourself in a way where people recognize what you have to offer. What do you feel about that? Tavia, you hit the nail on the head. You are absolutely right. You should always do what you love because when you do what you love, oh, it creates this fire about you. I mean, you walk into a room and people gravitate towards you. Your presence is so vibrant that people feel like they can't even turn you down. They can't even dim your light. I mean, you just, oh, your arm <laughs> makes people just. I love it. I love it. They can't dim your light. And that is the light that you should always be um, wanting to project in your image. When you walk into the room, I, I say that it's not about, confidence is not about thinking you're better than everybody. Confidence is knowing that you walk into the room and that you don't have to compare yourself to anybody in the room because you know that you are you. And even though there are other brands on the shelf, no one can do it like you, okay? Or, you know, you just do it the way that you do it. And then someone, I swear, someone will notice the way that you do it and want it the way that you do it, especially when you have a, when you have a business. Um, you have, don't worry about the competition. We worry too much about what other people are doing worry about yourself because the only competition you have is you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is come on to be a come on that <laughs> the only competition you have is you and the, the only person holding you back is you because if you just i swear if you just sit in silence sometimes you just gotta sit in silence and especially if you if you have faith Listen to it because he will speak to you. That intuition, that gut feeling that you have is going to take you a long way. If you listen to that gut feeling, especially when you're hanging out and you're doing something you're not supposed to, you know you're not supposed to be doing that because it's your gut. Mm -hmm. And that is what's going to take you. That's God t talking to you. Mm -hmm. That's how God talks to us. God talks to us when we're in silence. We don't have a lot of distractions. When we can say, oh my gosh, I feel I, I feel your spirit. I feel you. I know what I need to do. You got to sit in silence. And that is when you talk, when I talk about, you can't have a lot of baggage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because baggage mm -hmm. will hold you down. When you got, you got to let some of that baggage go. And knowing that you're imperfectly perfect, but you have to let some of this baggage go. People got to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to you got to just sit in silence and so sometimes you just got to say I'm going to do it. I'm not going to worry about what my mama says, what my daddy says, what my sister, my brother, my uh friend, my neighbor, my cousin, whoever, you know, what what my boss says because everybody has the ability to be their own boss. Right. And you know yes, what everybody right. That is, that is so true, Tabia, because everybody does not deserve a front row seat in your life. Some people need to be in the balcony if they don't support you. And as soon as you find out who your inner circle is, the people who will be there for you no matter what, you will be a lot happier and you will really know who your team is. Because I'm going to tell you right now how T.D. Jake, Steve Harvey, Tyler Perry, all of it, how those type of people have became successful is because they built up a team that wanted to see them win. And once you find a team of people that Amen want to see to that, you, Amen to that. You, you, <laughs> you gotta have a team that, that, that supports you mm -hmm. and that, believes and believes in your brand. That is so true, Tabia. 
And you know, it's, it, it, it really warms my heart what you're doing. I'm so proud of you because the yeah. first step in making it is always giving back. Because somebody marched to get us here, somebody cried to get us here, and somebody died to get us here. So we must give something back. It's our responsibility. And the fact that you're doing that, that you've built this platform, and that you're giving young women and young men an opportunity to shine along with showcasing your skills, it's phenomenal. And we need more people in our community that are willing to do this. So I'm, I'm extremely proud of what you're doing. Thank you so much. So we're just talking about the field. Well, you're in the field of communications, just like I'm in the field of communications. And so let's just talk about a little bit about um, those that want to go into the field of communications um, and they might be coming out of school or, you know, they trying to work their, their way into the field. So I just want to ask you some questions about the field of communications and pertaining to image. So how do you kind of enhance your own skills, your own communication skills, your own image and your lifestyle to, to fit within the field of communications? Yes, so how I was able to enhance my image consulting uh, to the public is by really branding myself in a way where I wanted people to perceive me. You know, when I go on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, I make sure that I'm not using profanity. I'm making sure that I'm not posting up pictures of me like with alcohol bottles in my hands or I'm not posting things from, uh, what is it, world, world star hip hop. Like those. I'm not posting that type of negative imagery that would draw that, those type of people to my page. So I make sure that when I put things on my social media, it's positive. And at the same time, it's still me because I can't, I can't act like I'm perfect, you know, because I do like to go out and have a good time. I do occasionally drink with friends. I, I like to party. I love to dance. I love to sing. So I do go out and have a good time. It's just that in moderation, I watch what I post. Right. And, and I just post right. things, but, right. but I, don't, I don't go overboard. Right, don't go overboard. Especially, you just have to manage um because people are going to talk about you regardless you know there's going to be you could be walking on water <laughs> you know and they're gonna be like she can't swim like you know it's just it there are people going to be talking about you regardless so you kind of just have to continuously manage your brand the best way that you can and it you're in the driver's seat you dictate where your brand is going so if you want your brand to be you know this all the way out there, you know, putting your whole life on Facebook and social media, then you're going to, you're giving people fuel to mm -hmm. talk about you, right? You're giving that, you're giving them the okay to disrespect you. You're giving them the okay to not take you seriously. But when you manage your, your image in which we're talking about on the To Be A Pope show is how to manage your brand, um, constantly because you it's something that you have to do every day right because there's someone out there that is that the devil is a lie i'm trying to tell you there's the devil when they see you doing well you that's how you know when you're when your your faith is when when the because the devil is going to say oh she's happy today mm -hmm. let's put something in her way so she's not happy and take her happiness but guess what that's why you have faith that's why you you have to live in faith and you have to know the word of god you got to go to church you got you know you just have to keep yourself spiritually healthy exercise if that's your thing exercise eat right those things you know having the good having those good people around you that can lift you up and and laughter and, and smile you know those things can take you a long way because the devil is a lie the devil will put something in your way and want to see how you react people will say things about you but they want to see how you react and if you don't react and really silence is the best way to way, way to manage negativity mm -hmm. and just continuously to manage it you don't have to fight you don't have to get loud with with people that don't respect you and that because by just removing yourself from the situation that makes them look like whoever they are right 
you know? So you just have to remove yourself from situations if, and, and listen to your gut feeling because everyone has that intuition. And I swear that's God's way of talking to us. Right. Um, so I just want to just ask you again, um, what are some, I guess, what, what do you see in the field of communications, kind of like some of the biggest mistakes that people make with communication, image, and lifestyle within the field um, of communication? I would say some of the mistakes that people make in the field of communications is limited them, limiting themselves to one category because it, it's such a broad category. And, you know, if you really tap into your resources, there are so many different things that you can do with communications. You know, you can include communications with marketing, advertising. You can start your own talk show like, like what you're doing to be a – you can – also make it where on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on your Twitter, that you can have a talk back, like a Q&A. So many different things that you can do with communications. And I think that sometimes people like to put it in one category, but I, I, I think it's great when people do th different things with communications because it is such a broad field. And I think when you don't put yourself in one category, you're, you're doing a great job. Because back in the day, I feel like, you only had to grow up and be one thing, like just a doctor or or just a nurse or or just a dentist. But nowadays, they've made it. They've really given us a platform where you can be more than one thing, mm -hmm. and it's okay. So mm -hmm. I say don't limit yourself with communications. Make sure that you utilize every aspect of it and, and get into different fields, get into different areas that you might be interested in. I think some of the... Um one of the mistakes that I've seen in the field of communications, uh, especially when it comes to branding or image and communication skills, um, I see that if a person has kind of like a dialect or an accent, that they need to be able to manage that code switching mm -hmm. as well as code switching as well. So if you, it's okay to have a dialect, but there is a point where you need to um, manage it so you're code switching and you're not, you, you know, you're you're using standard American English so it doesn't hinder you from getting a job that you want, you know. Um, so you you need to also with your parents, you know, you have to maintain a professional image um, and also researching the company that you are applying for. Mm -hmm. If it is, um, you know, if it's a news channel or if it is, um, you know, a hip hop channel, you know, just you need to know who you are, what your market is and who you're applying to. And you need to um, know if you're going to be business casual or if it, um, if you have to be professional within it with wearing a suit when you go for the interview, because that can make and break your chance of obtaining an internship, obtaining a, a job. Right. And once you have kind of um, burned a bridge or you've kind of have a reputation in the business that you're not, you don't take your image um, seriously that can also impact you because you never know who has connections where. And so the field of communications um, is all about um, networking and it's all about going after creating your own opportunities, especially now. There's no reason that you can't have your own brand. There's no reason that you can't, even when you're in school and college, um, or in your master's program, there's no reason why you can't start your your goals. And honestly, if I was a if I was um, hiring an intern, which I am actually in the process of hiring some interns, um, I'm looking for someone that has already started to think about what. Um, they want to do with their life and mm. what direction they want to go. And they've already have um, some, ex some experience on their own because they've researched. They've, they can talk about what they want. They can talk about the industry. They can talk about what the new trends are. And that is valuable when you are um, able to do the research on your own and you're independent and no one has to 
stay on you in on on making sure that you've completed a task because independent thinkers are valuable right very valuable so be an independent thinker if you're looking to go into and i mean this applies to any field but if you're if you're quick on your feet and you're and you can work independently that's a valuable skill that you need to put on your resume resume mm -hmm. That is so true, Tabia, and I'm so happy that you brought up those essential points because everything you said is very valid, and I think that a lot of young people, they do make the mistake of going down the wrong way where they're getting on social media and they're branding themselves in a, in a way that might not be taken well with the public. And I know that you're not supposed to care about what other people think, but if you are trying to brand yourself in a way where you want people to take you seriously, it is important to watch what you post. Like for example, there was a young lady that was on the bad girls club and she was on the bad girls club. And then when she got off, she wanted to go out for a, a spot on BET, like one of their one of their host positions. But she got disappointed and upset and angry because people weren't taking her seriously. But the thing about it is, is that she went on the bad girls club and then she tried to switch and change her image and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a good person though and I'm, I wanna be a motivational speaker. And it's like, you can't do both. You can't be both. Just like with the show Love and Hip Hop. You know, the, the, there's it's a like, young lady. Right. It's like you're going to be the villain or you're going to be the motivational speaker. <laughs> you know, the villain Which one? can't really be the motivational speaker. Right. You like, can't be both because even on Love and Hip Hop, there's a girl on there. She was a, a stripper, an exotic dancer, and then she tried to switch and become a rapper. But see, it, it's like people still have that image in their mind of her dancing in a, in a Miami club. And so she's trying to change her image and, and go to be in a rapper, but people will always still relate you to your past. So you just have to make sure that you take yourself seriously so that other people will, because if you don't, people are judgmental and you will try to wipe away what you've done, but some things will always stick like the Kim Kardashians, like the Mimi's, the sex tapes, that stuff will always stick with you. And that goes back to being knowing who you, who's around you, who your supporters are, and where you're going. And, and I think it's very important to realize that while you're young um, and to identify, like we talked about your God-given talent, identify where you're going. But I would say this with redemption, and I would say that there are people that have made bad mistakes or, you know, have done things that you know i feel like god um if you repent your sins you know what I'm saying it just goes back to the believing if you believe in god that he you know if you repent your sins that you know he does forgive you so i think that there are second chances you know and you know if you i feel like but you can't continuously say you want to do good and you want to be this motivational speaker and then on saturday you know, like you, in, on Sunday, you're doing one thing and on Saturday, you're doing something different. Right. That is that is so true to be. I, I totally agree with you. There are second chances. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes people can be judgmental, but you can always start over as long as you're willing to commit to it because right. you can't. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. If right. you're going to change, then make sure that you're changing and that you're changing for you to make yourself a better person and a better individual to inspire yourself and others. Right. Commitment is so important. Commitment is very important. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I think we're... Um, kind of going on over time, but I'm just so excited. I'm, I want to continue this conversation um, where I am on Twitter at at to be a Pope show. And Lauren, what do you, what are you on Twitter? What's your handle? My Twitter is at Lauren Ward underscore L W O O. All right. And we're also on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. Please like the Facebook, the To Be A Pope Show Facebook fan page. And if you would like to be a guest on the To Be A Pope Show, please email me at media at to be a pope show .com. And then just tell them again, where, where can they find you? Yes. 
You can find me on Instagram at Lauren Ward underscore L-W-O-O. You can find me on Twitter at Lauren Ward underscore L-W-O-O. I'm on Facebook as Lauren C. Ward. And also my website is www.lwu.org. All right. Well, thank you. And I look forward to um, having, you know, having you on again. Um, I'm sure. And I, I, you have a new talk show coming out as well. And I would love to be a guest on your show. Um, so as you can see, the To Be A Pope show, we keep it all the way real on the To Be A Pope show and really helping you manage your communication skills, image and lifestyle. So please check out our, um, our first episode we had. We had Shayla Courtney on. Uh, so check out that episode and we have a lot of episodes that are coming on on diff on the whole gamut of image so i'm so excited and thank you so much again for joining me on the to be a pope show oh not a problem to be a thank you for having me no problem <laughs>